in the problem of counting Boolean parentheses, one is given a Boolean expression which consists of a bunch of symbols which are true or false. And let's say, for example, we have n of these. And between each pair of symbols is a Boolean operator. So, for example, or and or XOR. Our goal is to count the number of ways we can parenthesize the expression such that it evaluates to true. For example, if I parenthesize the expression above like this, then it's going to evaluate to true. Our dynamic programming subproblems are going to be the following. Let's let t of ij denote the number of ways I can parenthesize a sub-expression from just symbol i up to symbol j. And by symbol here, I mean the trues and falses, not the operators between them. So i and j are going to range from 1 up to n. Just for an example, if I look at the string of symbols above, then t of 2 comma 4 is going to be 0, because there is no way that I can parenthesize this sub-expression such that it evaluates to true. Just for simplicity, let's also let f of ij denote the number of ways we can parenthesize the sub-expression from i to j such that it evaluates to false. As base cases, it's going to be very easy to compute t of ii and f of ii for all values of i. I'm then going to compute t of ii plus 1 and f of i, i plus 1, for all values of i, then t of i, i plus 2, and f of i, i plus 2, for all values of i, and so on. So basically I'm going to be building up solutions to larger and larger sub-expressions as I proceed. How can I compute each of the tij values in this sequence? Well, we'd like to know the number of ways we can parenthesize the expression that runs from i up to j such that it evaluates to true. To do this, note that every way of parenthesizing the expression from i to j is going to involve parenthesizing two sub-expressions, one of them going from i up to k, and the other one going from k plus 1 up to j. And then I have to combine these two sub-expressions with whatever operator happens to be between here. Let's say just for example that it's an and in this case. So to continue our example, an expression of two things anded together is only going to be true if both of the two operands are true. So the number of ways to parenthesize in this fashion, such that the entire expression from i to j is true, is going to be t of i k times t of k plus 1 j. Because any combination of a true value on the left and a true value on the right will give me a true value for the entire expression. So returning to my expression for t of ij is going to be the sum over all intermediate splitting points k, and these can range from i up to j minus 1. And here I need to write an expression which tells me for each particular value of k how many ways I can parenthesize the whole expression if I were to split at k. We've already seen that if the operator following the kth symbol is an and, then this formula is t of ik times t of k plus 1j. The expression for or is slightly more complicated. I'm going to take what I call total of ik to be the total number of ways of parenthesizing the sub-expression from i up to k. And that's going to be just t of ik plus f of ik. That's what I mean by total of ik. So I'm going to take total of ik times total of k plus 1j. That's going to give me the total number of ways I can parenthesize uh, such that I'm splitting at the point k. And I'm subtracting from that the number of ways I can parenthesize splitting at point k such that the expression has false on both sides. Remember that the only way to make an OR expression false is to make both of its operands false. And so the number of ways I can parenthesize an OR expression such that it evaluates to false is going to be the total number of possible ways I can parenthesize minus those in which both operands are false. And I can finish off with the formula for XOR 
Remember that an XOR expression is true if exactly one of its two operands is true. So the number of ways I can parenthesize this XOR expression such that it is true is the number of ways such that the first of the two expressions is true and the second is false, plus the number of ways where the first expression is false and the second is true. So this completes my recursive expression for t of ij in terms of solutions to smaller subproblems. I can write a similar expression for f i j, but I'll leave that as an exercise to the reader because it's very similar. Let's finish off by computing the running time of our algorithm. Each of these t i j values is going to take o of n time to compute because I'm going to be taking the sum over n terms. And I have n squared such t i j values and f i j values to compute, so my total running time is going to be o of n cubed. And the answer to my problem in the end will be found in t of 1, n.